It's a weeping thread leaf Japanese maple. And um, you can see that the shape of it, you know, it goes up to a certain point and then the branches cascade down the leaves, each individual leaf. Um, this is called thread leaf. Maine is full of fabulous materials for building Japanese-inspired gardens. We have so much beautiful stone here um, with beautiful patina. Haircap moss, that's exactly the same plant that is found in gardens in Japan. There's not a whole lot of overlap in actual species between Japan and New England, but haircap moss is one of them. There are certain types of Japanese maples that will grow nicely in Maine. Another plant that we use um, fairly frequently are pines, and you want the pine tree to be irregularly shaped. We like to use pitch pines, Pinus regida, which is native to Maine, and you can see it growing all over Acadia National Park on the cliffs and, and so forth. Some of the oldest gardens in Japan um, you know, date from the 500, 600, 700. I was able to find a complete set of this really amazing 26 volume treatise on Japanese gardens. This was written in uh, 1939 by a garden designer and historian named Shige Morimire. There have been uh, um, books written on him. He and, um, and the cats, the cats love these books too. <laughs> He designed a lot of gardens in addition to um, cataloging them. And the, uh, the 26 volume set um, details uh, every major garden in Japan in 1939. So um, it gives a historical perspective. Making a garden look natural and believable is kind of how we think of it, is one of the most important things that we do. We learn about how to make that happen by um, studying natural scenes. Um, we go to um, wild rivers and mountaintops and um, look at the way that plants behave in certain circumstances and the way that stones are. Um, and, and a, a good example of that is um, in a, if we're making a, a dry river garden, we'll use um, smooth stones for the river course itself. And then um, on the riverbanks, there will be crusty rocks with, covered with patina.